In this presentation, we're going to learn how to avoid uh, plagiarizing. We'll start with the definition. Plagiarism is the act of using the words, ideas, images, charts, statistics, and photographs of another person, a group, or an organization without giving credit. Now, colleges and universities typically use a documentation system. It's an organized method to give credit to the original authors. At Macomb, the English department teaches MLA. However, you will be using APA in most of your classes, most likely. If you know MLA, it is easier to master APA. You aren't expected to memorize all the rules of either system. Instead, you'll learn to use the reference books. There are three requirements for avoiding plagiarism. First of all, start by learning what plagiarism is. Go back and read that definition several times until you understand it. Secondly, use the most rec recent version of MLA to avoid plagiarizing. That would be the 2009 guidelines. And third, keep track of the information you borrow and cite it appropriately. Start tracking it the minute you start working on your research project. There are three basic ways to use the ideas of others. First, you directly quote. That means you copy them exactly as they are, as they are written, and you enclose them in quotation marks if you're using four lines or less. More than that, you would indent them. The second way is to paraphrase. Use all the ideas, but change the keywords, all of the keywords, and some of the sentence structure. Finally, the last way is by summarizing. You paraphrase, but you delete the illustrations and examples. With respect to crediting sources, only the ideas, opinions, images, photos, charts, statistics, things like that must be credited to the original author. Common knowledge, such as facts, does not require any crediting. It's always a question of ownership. If someone owns an idea or a way of expressing it or an image such as a photograph or a research study, statistic, anything like that, then that person receives credit for it. Here's two examples to show the difference. Common knowledge would be Jane Austen wrote Persuasion. It doesn't need to be credited, it's factual, and no one owns that information. However, if you wrote Jane Austen's novel, Persuasion is her best novel, according to John Smith, you would have to give that uh, author, John Smith, the credit. Opinions have to be credited. You have to acknowledge the fact that it's an idea or a way of phrasing something that's owned by another person. When you borrow uh, information, if you copy more than two words, not words like a, an, and the, but two key words, you have to enclose them in quotation marks. If you use more than four lines of quoted words, you must omit the quotation marks and indent those words instead. Now that is a huge red flag to your professor that you have copied and pasted a large amount of type. A, a large amount of uh, source material. So you want to avoid doing that too often. For example, two longer quotes in a three-page paper may be okay if there's a real reason for copying and pasting that much information. But in general, have a very good reason for using more than four lines of quoted material. For, uh, with respect to borrowing information, you have to write the citations in two places, inside the body of the paper and on a last page that's called the Works Cited page if you're using MLA. So there's two types of citations, the in-text citations which are often put in parentheses and the longer citation on the Works Cited page. If you use images, photos, charts, graphics, uh, 
or anything like that that appears as an image on the page, you have to also write the source line below the borrowed material. You have to show underneath that that is borrowed, that you didn't take that photograph or you didn't use the research, uh, uh, you didn't complete the research study and develop the chart yourself. You borrowed it from someone else. Whenever you paraphrase or summarize, meaning that you are changing the key words and some of the sentence structure, you still must give credit to the original author by writing the in-text citation and the work cited citation. Some students don't realize that. They think when they put the ideas into their own words, then it becomes their own ideas. That's not true. For example, if you borrowed Einstein's theory of relativity and put it in your own words, if you could, you still would not own that idea. So just phrasing something yourself doesn't mean you aren't plagiarizing if, going back to this idea of ownership, it's a unique idea or opinion owned by someone else. Give credit to all of the authors by either enclosing the information in quotation marks or indenting the long, longer quotations and by writing the two citations. That's the essential thing to remember about avoiding plagiarism. However, you cannot string together too many copied words, even though you give credit to the original authors. For example, a student could just use wider margins and write a citation at the end of a 10-page paper, and the perception would be that the student perhaps wrote that paper and used a few lines at the end when in fact the student copied the whole thing. You can see that we have to have rules to avoid this problem of copy-paste plagiarism. And in general, you have to write a substantial amount, at least 80% of the assignment yourself in your own words. You can use the ideas of others if you put them in your own words and give the credit to the original authors, but you can only directly copy 20% of the words. It's surprisingly easy for professors to detect plagiarism. Most colleges and universities use Turnitin.com. This is an electronic database with trillions of words. I, I can't imagine how many words are in that database because it started with everything um, that it could possibly take from the internet. But in addition, every time a student's paper is put into Turnitin.com, Turnitin.com captures it. Universities and colleges all over the world use Turnitin.com. So if someone is putting a paper through in China while you're asleep, it's going into that database. You're not going to be able to outwit this system. But even if you could outwit Turnitin.com, it's very easy for uh, professors who read papers all day long to detect changes in writing style. Don't try to plagiarize. You're going to get caught. And every college and university has a plagiarism policy. Often repeated acts of plagiarism result in dismissal from the school. Intention is not a factor in determining whether a student plagiarized because students are responsible for learning how to avoid plagiarism. You had to take a research report writing course to qualify for this literature class. So you can't say you don't know about plagiarism because it's on the record that you do. If you have any questions about plagiarism, please post them in the MLA Review Discussion Forum. And you can also email me if it's something that you would rather discuss privately, such as uh, a part of your paper that you're afraid you didn't paraphrase correctly, something like that. And I just want to leave you with this last thought. Students who plagiarize on a major assignment usually fail the course. I'm here to help you avoid that.